you know, you have to, in my opinion, incorporate strength training in whatever you do. But the best way to do it is, in my opinion, using free weight. And if you can use free weight without having to worry about space or having to worry about loading up discs on a handle, I think is, is the best experience out there. Welcome back to the Fit Insider Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Venari. Today, I'm joined by Stephen Owusu, co-founder and CEO of Jack Shocks, makers of connected strength training equipment. In this episode, we discuss the rise of the smart strength category, the company's connected kettlebell, dumbbells, and interactive studio, and Stephen explains why his decision to not chase growth during the pandemic is paying off. Let's get into it. Hi, Stephen. Welcome to Fit Insider. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Good to be here. Looking forward to the conversation today, and, and maybe just to kick things off, could you introduce yourself and tell us about what you're working on at Jack Shocks? Yeah, I'm Stephen, Stephen Owusu, I'm co-founder, CEO of Jack Shocks. You know, originally from the UK, um, came to the United States um, five, six years ago, you know, in my one briefcase and booked a couple of weeks hotel in New York and had a dream and felt the United States was the best place to see it through. And yeah, um, the journey of Jack Shocks um, began. Um, took me, you know, a few months just to understand sort of the culture and and really get in situated um, in the United States. And very quickly, you know, we got the idea off the ground. And it was a very simple idea of creating a platform um, that we could collect um, data around the activities that um, users are, you know, doing. And to be able to build this engine um, to help people make better decisions about their health. So although Jack's Jocks, you know, when you think about Jack's Jocks, you think about some of the most innovative products that we've launched. It actually never started off with a hardware idea. Um, we had to do that just as we became obsessed with delivering an optimum customer experience. So that's sort of myself and, and how, how we got started. Yeah, it's super interesting. You know, if you think about the probably last two years, of course, right, with the connected fitness and at-home hardware. But like so many of the companies and yourself included, this is what, like, I think 2016, maybe get it started down this path of how do we, you, as you mentioned, the activity and better health and fitness and what does that technology look like? Um, can you maybe talk about how the product offering has evolved, I think, from maybe, you know, first launching the connected kettlebell and dumbbells and now the immersive studio experience. Uh, can you talk about like that evolution and how it's maybe shifted over time? Yeah, no, great question. Um, when we started, um, a lot of what we were doing was very new. Um, so there was a little bit about, you know, even proving to ourselves that uh, it can be done. And I remember having conversations about, you know, this motorized adjustable dumbbell and, you know, people will often tell me it's just not even possible to be able to do that. So I think there was those sort of initial stages of proving out the concept of what we wanted to do. Um, and then we had a launch in 2019 at CES. That was the moment that for me, I felt we were onto something. Um, we had a little booth and it was just meant to be a very quiet showcase. And we got swamped. Um, we came out winning most of the award out of CES. Uh, met with um, some of our partners, Apple, and we know Apple sell phones and, you know, computer, but they invited me to their head office in Cappuccino, loved the product and decided to list it worldwide um, through some in-stores and also online. Um, but all the while, we were building onto the studio because the idea of Jack Stokes was always an end-to-end, -end, full integrated system. And if you think about our products, no on and off button, everything you need in one place at a touch of a button. Um, so I come from a philosophy of, we don't want the user to have to figure stuff out. Like you just gotta do it for them and it's just gotta work. Um, so when we launched the kettlebell and we saw um, the success of that, it gave us confidence. And then we started rolling out some of the other products. Now, what we found was that even before the products were ready, I had retailers that were willing to write, you know, millions of dollars of orders um, so that almost, you know, was in front of our own launch plans. So rather than waiting to finish the full studios, you know, we had partners telling us we want this product. 
we wanted to ship it. Um, so we had to go down that path. So that explains why you saw the kettlebell and the dumbbell and the foam roller connect in the market before you saw the interactive studio. But all in all, this was the one thing that we've been working on. Yeah, it's really interesting to hear, you know, uh, the it'd be hard or impossible as an early stage company to to say no, right? When the demand is there and people are asking for the product and now you get to the kind of connected studio where you have the dumbbells and the kettlebell and the foam roller with the screen. Um, so that, that product out there, how long has that been on the market? How long have you been even fulfilling orders for that? Yeah, we launched that in the middle of December. Um, COVID had an, a different impact with, with Jackstox than um, some of our, our friends. We launched it in the market uh, middle of December, started shipping units in homes. Um, so just under three months um, since it's been out there and, and it's been a very incredible ride the last two to three months, just seeing the product in people's home and the reaction and, and some of the metrics coming through. Yeah, so just uh, thinking through how you talked about the the product evolution and then getting the studio out there into the market, will the focus now, will you exclusively be selling the the studio offering and then basically trying not to sell the one-off products or will it still be kind of offering that that suite of products as well? It is. I think Jack Stocks have a very unique opportunity to be able to bring people onto the platform from different price points um, whilst having a very similar immersive experience. Um, the full interactive studio is always going to be you know, the most immersive of all experiences, in my opinion. Um, but somebody who buys the Kettlebell Connect or the Dumbbell Strength product um, will be able to have a very unique experience. And, and I will describe it in two ways. You know, up until now, um, we've seen people potentially buying just a dumbbell or kettlebell to add to what they're already doing. Um, what you're going to find is a product where people are buying into an experience. Um, so what Jack Stocks will be offering is three different experiences, which will lead from one will be a kettlebell experience, a dumbbell experience, and the full interactive studio experience. And a lot of the focus is actually going to be on the platform, sort of the content um, live which at Jack Stocks, you know, when we say live, is going to be very, very different. Um, it will be actual live. And the data sets um, that you'll be able to get from the recommendation engine and what have you. So we're going to really focus on selling these experiences versus selling pieces of hardware, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. I, th I think it makes a ton of sense in terms of, I think even going beyond that idea, is so much of the, what has happened and evolved in the at-home fitness space, right? Is not that the equipment necessarily is new. It's all, you know, a different version of equipment that has existed for some time now, whether, yeah. it, whether it's in the strength training category, dumbbells or, or the cardio category. It's like now it's becoming what does the experience look like? What does the content platform look like? What type of data are we able to get from that? How do we build community around that? Um, so just digging in there a little bit, when you think about, the platform and the experience you said live will be a little bit different for you and that experience ultimately that you're trying to create what what can somebody expect from the jack jocks platform i think you can expect an end-to-end -end solution so whether is that you want to have a personal trainer experience where there is a much more a one-to-one -one, um virtual experience but with data that you can hang your hat on, not that I'm going to write you some programs and, hey, go do it and maybe enter it. Um, we are able to create a very unique experience with the kind of products that we have, free weight with um, trackability. Um, you are also going to find that a lot of what recommendations sit, and I've, I've read some of your articles, and you would know that it's sort of very early stage algorithms that we put together. Um, so you're going to find much more advanced recommendation sets, really personalized on you. And I know it's a cliche now, but we've been working on this for a number of years, and we're really excited um, to be able to push it out. Um, so you are going to find very unique experiences around whether you want that one-to-one -one experience um, where you can go to a marketplace and, and find somebody that, you know, is well-suited for you um, versus just wanting to do a 20-minute workout, 
being a strength or cardio, or maybe it's just recovery um, because the studio have a formal connect that sits there and some programming towards recovery, which is quite important to us at Jack Stocks. So you are going to find that no matter what it is you want to do, um, you will find that on the Jack Stocks platform and our, our mobile app experience is going to be changed. So even if you feel, hey, I'm not sure about this, I just want to jump in and test it out, you'll be able to do that. Um, and if you bought the kettlebell experience or the dumbbell experience, and then you decided, hey, I want the full thing, we have a program that allows you to you know, upgrade all the way through so you don't have to ditch your product whilst you go for the new one. Um, so that's sort of the kind of end-to-end -end experience that I'm, I'm describing. Yeah, it's, it's very exciting, especially for the strength training space, right? When you, when you think about, you know, well, someone like myself, I guess, kind of fortunate enough that I have the space that I do have a bunch of free weights and the rack and the dumbbells and kettlebells. Um, but certainly even then it takes up, it does take up a ton of space and it's, it's not always very accessible to do. But when you think about now packing this into one more accessible um, experience and certainly now integrating with the content, with the tracking, with all those things that, you know, you don't have to figure it out on your own. When you think about the, what we've kind of, I don't know how you think about it, but we've kind of dubbed it the, the smart strength space, right? Bringing technology to what was the most analog experience, like picking up a heavy weight and putting it down. Why did you arrive at the, the strength training space in the first place? And how are you thinking about the evolution of that space? Yeah, great question. I think the data is pretty clear about what strength training does to somebody's overall health, right? And as you get older, it becomes really, really important to be able to maintain muscle mass. So um, we felt that um, there was a bunch of solutions when it comes to cardio, sort of body weight, workout, content, great products out there. But when you look at a strength space, like you said, it was still stuck in the dark ages. And even today, even though there are some solutions out there within our category, um, some of our competitors, when it comes to free weight, you know, Jack Stocks is really the only product. Um, and we've spent many years on the technology, patenting the technology as well. But Jack Stocks is the really only free weight you can pick up that does all the tracking for you. Um, we've seen some solution with camera where you have to be in a certain range. Well, you can move this into another room, you can put it at the back of your car and take it to the holiday destination and still use it because the technology is embedded um, inside of the products. And one of the things that we get from a user feedback standpoint is until you've experienced touching the screen and in a second moving weight from um, eight to 50 pounds or you know 12 to 24, you know, versus loading up weight. So to your point about, hey, I have the space, but sort of loading up weights and then having to sort of take them down and load them up. And it's kind of very tedious in this day and age. So I think Jack Stocks is the best place to really just give you all the weight that you need um, at a touch of a button, get real-time tracking, and we measure um, power metric at a rep level. Um, so really in real time, you know, you can really get the full experience when it comes to strength. And one stat that I'm very happy to, to share is around since launch, you know, on an average of six weeks, we see people lifting a certain number of weights um, of a workout. And then within six weeks, literally, it's, you know, you can see it climbing. And we have people going from 4,000 pounds when they first started in a 45 minutes class lifting 23,000 pounds. So you can already see that when you give people the range of products, easy to adjust, and the data, they can really use that to really get better to that degree. Yeah, absolutely. I think also it's, you know, strength training is one of the kind of most rewarding, at least in my experience, um, modalities because this idea of progressive overload is so apparent when you do it that it's when you do add, you know, my garage, I have two and a half pound plates. It's like when you put the two and a half on, pounds on there and then the next week it's five and the next week it's 10 and the next or month, however long it is. It's like, it's very obvious when you're doing that, just how quickly you can progress. Uh, so it's, it's super exciting to see that translated 
as you're saying, in, in those stats. Yeah, and, and also sometimes there is this school of thought that strength training is just if you want to bulk up, mm. and it couldn't be far from the truth. Um, you know, you can get very lean, you can get super fit. If you want to run a marathon or do any endurance type of training, you cannot do without really doing some resistant um, free weight training, in my opinion. Um, so I think that, like I said, there is a myth that, oh, I don't want to bulk up, so I don't want to do strength. It does not what it does. If you want to bulk up, there is a program for that. But actually strength training is something that overall is great to incorporate um, whatever training you're doing. Um, within your week um, to be able to build that muscle mass. I could chat about it all day. I don't want to derail the conversation too much, but it's it's something that I've talked about a ton with people over the years coming from, you know, being a personal trainer and owning a gym and working in, you know, strength training and things like that, which like so many people saying, you know, I don't want to bulk up. It's like, if you wanted to bulk up, like you, without adjusting and totally transforming your nutrition and the amount of calories that you're taking in, the amount of protein you're taking in, like no amount of weightlifting is going to make you, you know, quote unquote, bulk up. So it's like, there's so many more factors to it, um, which I always think is important to stress, but just in general, right. As you said, and I think something that I think if we fast forward like five or 10 years, so much more of the conversation around health and fitness is going to be, you know, we know it now, but it's not talked about like the deterioration of muscle as you age and how that, you know, you can track the data to see like, you know, the, the trajectory of like you're now you're become bedridden become, because you don't have the strength in your legs or your lower body or posterior chain. And then if you become bedridden, it's basically like, that's very treacherous, right? In terms of all other indicators of health. So it's, it's super important just as a basic metric of health. And, and I will add to that. That is why I am very, very excited about the products and the experiences that we have in the market. You know, if you are a runner, um, you can still buy a Jack Shocks Dumbbell Strength Experience and still add that to what you're doing. And if you want to have um, Jack Stocks as your your home gym, if you like. You can buy the studio and have, you know, the cardio, um, the strength, the, the, the different variety of workouts we have. So really, you know, you have to, in my opinion, incorporate strength training in, in whatever you do. But the best way to do it is, in my opinion, using free weight. And if you can use free weight without having to worry about space or having to worry about loading up discs on a handle, I think is is the best experience out there. Yeah, I think we're we're in agreement there. It's it's the the strength training aspect is is huge. And you know, one thing I wanted to circle back to earlier in the conversation, you mentioned that maybe COVID had a different impact for your business than I think you said some of the competitors or peers. Uh, could you just elaborate on that? What was the experience like during that time, and and how did it impact the business? Yeah, so I think during COVID, we were still um, working through um, the studio products. We wanted to launch and we were not happy with where the experience sat. So, you know, the decision was to go ahead and ship and ride a wave. And I was very confident that what we were building had nothing to do with COVID. Um, and even if we wrote it, it would have been amazing and it was just going to come down as we've seen already in the marketplace. So we made a conscious decision to take our time and get the products to the place that we want to use, that we will feel proud about. Um, so we didn't ride the rave in terms of all the different revenue. The little products we had in our warehouse was sold out within weeks. We didn't replenish and we really took our time um, to get a product right. Um, and I always feel that COVID is one of these once in a generation um, event. And I feel very happy that we made that decision because now from what we are seeing from our users, um, I won't disclose how many we've shipped so far, but we've had one return. One customer has said, hey, you know, um, I want to return my product. From the number of units we've shipped to have only one customer return it, you know, what is that? I don't know, 99.99% satisfaction rate. You know, that that is that is something you can't replicate. So COVID had a very, it was tough, really, really tough for us to make that decision. Um, but I think in the end, um, we made the right decision to be able to bring a product that um, we, are, we are most proud of. It's really interesting to hear the thought process behind that because I think for a lot of the companies that we're seeing now, of course, 
Peloton is probably the you know uh, main example that we're is getting discussed, but quite a few others as well that you know it was the best of times, but it was the worst of times in terms of how that all played out and trying to chase demand as opposed to saying, hey, we're going to position ourselves to still be completely sustainable and in a good place on the other side of this because to your point, this – this isn't going away, this trend. It's not something that, um, you know, if we ride the wave, as you put it, um, we maybe we don't sustain ourselves through the other side. So now that you kind of think about, you know, you wanted to perfect the experience, you wanted to be ready when maybe things turn the corner. Have you seen or are you able to tell in terms of there was this demand at maybe peak COVID and now it's slowed down or now you're starting to really push in terms of marketing. Where, how are you positioning the product and getting it out there now that you, yeah. you think that you're more confident in it? Super interesting question, right? Because to your point, um, there was a, ra- a wave out there which we, we decided not to, um, to ride and get our product right. We had some pre-orders and majority, a very, very high percentage of all our pre-order customers, they waited a year, they, you know, and they all came back um, to buy the products and everybody's happy with their purchase, using it, having returned it. What we started to see when we launched was demand was very sort of on an upward curve and we've continued to see that. We've not seen any dip on demand. We've started to see it steady. Obviously, January is always a little bit of a, a higher curve. Um, but we are now coming into it versus, I guess, others that maybe have been out there, maybe picked up all the low-hanging fruits and probably spending quite a bit on character, keep keep the, the wheels turning. We are now on the opposite side. And, you know, we've been very, been very sort of, um, I was listening to some of my colleagues on your show talking about a similar idea. We are very prudent with cash. Um, we don't have a huge team. And throughout, we've maintained that. So we are best placed to really um, rock it out because we have all the foundation. We've got a product that people love, metrics that is absolutely world class. I was not even expecting that. Uh, And now all it is is about just continue to go at pace. Um, And I think for the next 12 months, Jackstox has to go at pace um, before we probably start pulling more gasoline um, 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 to the fire. So we're very happy with what we are seeing. We're not doing crazy th- stuff. And your point about marketing, um, Jack Stocks for the last couple of years, we don't tend to do any marketing. All our products have the tens of thousands of units we sold. We're word of mouth and through our partners. We, we don't spend any money on marketing, so to speak. It's only now that we're starting to do some activity. Um, but again, we're not coming at it as, hey, just go and spend whatever it takes. Um, um, we've been very sensible about our approach and have a very managed way um, to go forward. And we plan to maintain that. Yeah. On the distribution side and to the extent that you have been able to get the product out there and through partners and different channels, can you talk about what has been successful, where you are able to leverage that and where you're seeing kind of growth in the channels, given that I think quite the opposite of what we're seeing across the industry, which is everybody's having to spend a ton to get any type of traction whatsoever. So what is working for you? Yeah, great question. I think that uh, the product is just so unique. Um, When people see the adjustability of the product and, you know, let's say you are in the market to buy a piece of dumbbell set. Um, If price is the issue, then maybe you don't buy Jack's Jocks. Um, but the product is so unique. So usually what we find is that when we've partnered with the likes of Apple, um, which normally people are not going to Apple to look for a kettlebell or a foam roll, um, but it's, it's quite instant. Um, we see it pick up. Um, we've had the same with Best Buy, um, who we still partner with. Um, but we've also had a very controlled um, partnership. So for many years, we only worked with pa- Apple and Best Buy. Um, even now, we are making that tighter. And if you look at what hasn't gone so well, it's probably on returns where sometimes if somebody buy a product from, say, a particular partner and maybe they're not happy, they might just drive up there and say, hey, um, just give me another one. We have very, very low returns rate from when we sell from our own on our own site. And I'm talking anywhere from zero to two percent. 
Um, people who buy Jack's Jocks are usually very happy with it and go and use their products. So one of the things that we are thinking about is how do we protect that experience from when they get it off the box? So internally, we are having these discussions about, okay, for the studio, for example, where we may want to put our arms around the user from when they come to our website all the way to when they get it home, we are starting to have very different conversations. Um, and we're going to balance that, obviously, with um, some of the CAG conversations. And what we are finding is that new partners are coming online, which is not retail partners, but think about if you own a gym or a studio right now, and you've seen all this wave of connected fitness, you're probably thinking about, okay, what can I do? Um, so there are a number of different conversations where I think there's probably going to be different type of partnerships that you will see Jack Jock's been involved in um, that is still going to help us drive that awareness um, at the same time. Yeah, a lot of opportunities down that path in terms of what do the partnerships look like? What does distribution look like? How are you able to then leverage that? I think we've even seen some companies doing that on the content front, like integrating different um, either studios or instructors. So I think, yeah, that will continue to evolve. Maybe changing gears as we get towards the end of the conversation, you mentioned being kind of more thoughtful in terms of how you're deploying capital. I think to this point, the company's raised like $17 million. At least that's what is public. How are you thinking about continuing to both finance and maybe encourage and increase growth as you get to like this next phase um, of the company? Yeah, no, great question. Um, you're absolutely right. Um, we, from a go forward standpoint, um, we are going to start discussions um, in, in, and it's already started with some partners that we've been in discussions with in the past uh, with the idea to raise capital. Um, but again, the, the philosophy doesn't change. I don't think that um, the next 12 months is about um, going to mass. I think the next 12 months for us is about solidifying the experience that the people who are on our platform are having, um, pushing that a little bit more forward. And yes, plays you know quite a few units in the market. Um, so we will raise capital um, in the next few months. But you know the philosophy of the business is not going to change. I think from a growth standpoint, as we get to Q3 or Q4, is where I expect Jack's Jocks to come, you know, on, on its own. I think that we're already seeing some amazing signs from what we are doing from an activity standpoint, but we just, we're just managing um, the growth right now. And I think by the time we get to sort of Q3 of Q4 this year, um, I will expect that we are being a l more active and sort of going up the, the growth curve. Um, so, yeah, we'll be in the market, um, you know, raising money in the next, I would say, imminently in the next few months. Sure. I think hearing you talk about it, both from how you approached it during COVID, how you're thinking about continuing to grow the company, the type of relationship you want to have with users, um, very thoughtful, very deliberate in terms of charting that, that course forward. But if we were to maybe, if you want to think about it, zooming out or just kind of fast forward a few years, like what ultimately do you want the impact or goal to be? Um, how do you think about that yourself? How do you communicate that with the team and investors? And like, ultimately, like, what is that North Star goal? Yeah. So anybody who's thinking about having an at-home fitness product, um, we want them to choose Jack's Jocks. Um, we would have three different touch points from a pricing standpoint and experience standpoint for people to be able to enter. You are going to see us zoom in in our digital offering to be able to bring more people um, onto the platform. And I alluded earlier about um, some of the more personalized live experiences, um, if you like. Um, so if I was to zoom out, say, three, four years from now, um, you will see a few more innovative digital experiences that Jackstrox will launch, which unfortunately I can't share, um, but we have it in the pipeline. And then there's probably some um, hardware products that will be in the offering as well, um, but a lot more on the software side in terms of the digital experiences that you are going to see. And I think we are trying to bridge the gap between at home and 
sort of in studio because in my opinion, it should be the same. And I think you should have your data wherever you go, wherever, wherever you decide to work out. So look forward to us trying to bridge that gap. And as we, we try to position the business as, you know, if it's fitness that you are thinking about and you want to experience dark stocks, um, we want dark stocks to be the one thing that you know, you no longer have to choose between, oh, do I buy this piece of equipment, which can only do this? Or do I buy that piece of equipment that can only do that? Um, you'll be able to come to the platform and get pretty much all the type of experiences that we know people are looking for onto that platform. Yeah, certainly a lot to look forward to and we'll be following along. Uh, I would, I guess I'd ask, uh, we'll get you out of here on this. For folks who are listening and, and also want to learn more and follow along, where would you point them? I'll point them to our website, um, jackstocks.com. Um, you know, anybody who wants to get in touch, we, we have a form there. They can, they can reach us. Um, but jackstocks.com is probably the best place to check us out or, you know, follow one of our social handles on Instagram and what have you. And I think you'll get a good sense of what the brand is about and how we connect with our members. Yeah, fantastic. I definitely encourage folks to check you out and very excited that we got a chance to connect here today. So thanks for taking some time. All right. No, thank you. Thanks, Joe.